Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the enhancements to SharePoint list rules. Now, back in February of 2022, I did a similar video where I did the side-by-side -side comparison of the SharePoint list rules with Power Automate Flow. Now, as we fast forward to 2024, I noticed two enhancements that have come in. One of them is a huge game changer, specifically on the conditions piece. But the second one, it caught me by surprise. And I want to make sure I bring that to your attention as well. So stick around. This is very important. But first, here's my new intro video. So this is the video I was talking about. I actually went ahead and released that back in February 21st of 2022. And I'm doing an explanation of how to actually go ahead and use these rules with and did a side by side comparison with Power Automate. Now, here's where I want to go ahead and pause. You see, at that time, back in February of 2022, when you went and created a list rule specifically for a SharePoint list, um, you had these four options. Starting from the left, there was a column changes a column value changes, a new item is created and an item is deleted. Remember, there were four of them. Now what I want to do is switch over and show you the enhancements that have come right now in 2024. And the overall process to get there is still the same. We go to automate and in automate, you see set a reminder rules or the rules. I'm going to click on rules and in rules, I'm going to click on create a rule. And did you notice? Now we only see three. So that's the important thing. We only see data and column changes. A new item is created and an item is deleted. That's still there. Those two that we saw before, let me go back to that video. These two, a column changes and a column value changes. Both of those have basically been consolidated into data in column changes, which kind of makes sense. All right. Um, so that's the first important thing is the change which has come up. Second one is the enhancement. Now, before I go over here, it's very important that I show you with one thing is that in my SharePoint list, let me go and take a look at the list settings so I can make that very clear. Uh, in my list settings, I have these choice type columns. So if you see the session type, the session type is of type choice. So if I click on the session type, you will see that I've got choices such as meal, keynote, breakout, workshop, like those. That's the important thing is that it is a choice type column. Now, I'm going to go back into my SharePoint list and I'm going to go and create a rule. I'm going to go to my rules. I'm going to create a rule. And now in data in column changes, select that. And I'm going to make sure I select that choice type column because this enhancement is only there for the choice type column. So when I click on that, I'm going to go and say session type. Now, when I do sessions type, still everything looks the exact same that it was. But here's the thing. When I go and say choose a condition in choose a condition, I've got the option to say when in choose a condition, I've got these four options is to anything to enter to one of enter values and is not. Here is the big game changer to one of enter values. If I go and select that now for the first time, this new message comes up over here. In addition, when I click on it, it actually shows me the choices that we added to our SharePoint list choice type column, which is huge because now we don't have to do any guessing. We won't have any typo problems. You pick and choose over here. There's more. So check this out. Okay. I'm going to go and say I selected meal. Now, when I do that, I've got this plus option. So if I click on the plus option, another option to add a choice comes up. In addition, when I click on it, just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes or any duplicates, the original selection, which in our case is meal is no longer here just to avoid any mistakes. So if I go and now click keynote, I get another option. If I go and click on keynote and I see in my drop downs, now I don't see meal because it's already here. I don't see keynote because it's already selected. I can go and select the breakout. So how many more can I select? Can I select all my choices? Well, let's test them. I've got the breakout. Let me go and do workshop. I got the workshop. Let me go and do panel. Next, let me go and select talk. Let me go and select networking. And there you go. I've gone and selected all of them. So I think this piece is very dynamic. It's actually giving you at least as many choices that you have. And for send an email to, I'm going to go and click on me. Who is me? Me is the person you've signed in as. So on the top right, I see I've signed in as Adele. Therefore, when I say me, I say Adele. All right. Keep that in mind because that's going to be very important in a few minutes. Um, also, I'm going to not do a little cleanup over here because I just want a notification to come in for two type of session types, a keynote 
and also for say breakout, right? So I'll go and make sure that I remove the networking, I'll go and remove the talk, I'll go ahead and move out the uh, panel. Um, I'll go ahead and also do remove the uh, workshop and then this meal, I'll remove that one. So, oh, that keynote probably got changed. Let me go and change that over to workshop. So keynote and workshop. Anytime someone goes and selects any one of these, I want a notification to send to me, which is Adele, all right? This is good, my rule is good, and I'll go ahead and now click on create. So the new rule is already created over here. By default, it is turned on. Another important thing is that this limit of up to 15 rules, that was there back in February of 2022. It is there right now in 2024 as well. That hasn't changed, all right? So just thought I'll call that out. All right, so we are good over here. Now what I'm gonna do is as a test, I'll go and switch over to another user. So let's go do that. I'll switch over over here to Diego. Has, Diego has access to the SharePoint list and enough privilege to even go and see these rules that is there. So if I now go and sign in as Diego, um, this is the rule, but check this out. Now, if I go and take a look at the rule, you see how send email to changed to Adele? Remember how it was just 30 seconds ago? When we signed in as Adele, the send to email sent it as me. So it's very important that you know that is that over here, it remembers who that me is. And so when you sign in as somebody else, which in this case is, is Diego, Diego knows, okay, the email is going to go to Adele. Diego also knows when Adele went ahead and created this rule. So all of this little additional and subtle information which is there is very important because it's helping everybody know who created this rule and when it was created. All right, so let's actually go and close out this one and now do some tests. So remember, the list rule states that the notification will come out if your session type is of type keynote or it is workshop. So keynote is already there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this session, I'm gonna go and click on edit, and we'll change it from the breakout to workshop. Moment I do that and I click on save, uh, we should be getting a notification. And who's we? Specifically, it is Adele who'll be getting. So let me switch over now and take a look at Adele. Right over here, we are in Adele. If I go up over there, you now see this email that is coming in. Important thing is that it tells, hey, you know, Diego changed the session type to workshop for the session name, and it's giving us this information. Uh, if I go and click on this go item, it does the exact same too. It actually opens it up into the Microsoft Lists browser, and you're able to see directly down to the item. It's not that it takes you to the list and you gotta find the item. No, the URL is so dynamic that based on what you selected, it takes you directly to that item level. But here's that second important thing. Check this out. Right now, when that email came to us, it was sent by the user who made the update or who made the modification, which in this case was Diego sending it directly to Adele. This has changed. And to show you, let me go back to that original video. So if I just go and click on play over here, it is going through the entire process. I'm showing you what it is. Any second now, we'll go ahead and take a look at the video itself. See right here, we're gonna click on it. I'm gonna pause, check this out. Back in February of 2022, the emails were coming in from SharePoint Online, specifically no-reply at sharepointonline.com. That has changed. Remember, right now, when I go back and take a look, it's no longer SharePoint Online, but it is, the per but it is sent by the person who actually made the change. So you might have some mixed feelings on this one because the good thing is that now we know who the change came from. It directly came from Diego because Diego was the one who went ahead and updated that SharePoint list item. But we also gotta make sure that this is not emails that are coming in because if you've got on your mobile phone and you see an email from Diego, you might actually think Diego himself send you say a write-up email, but that's not the case. This is coming automatically from the list rule that we created. Now the good thing about this change is say for example, Adele is not sure about the change that Diego made, right in this email, Adele can basically just come and do a reply and start sending that email because guess, guess what? The two already has Diego's email address. It's not the original SharePoint Online, which means you have to remove the SharePoint Online, find Diego's email address and put it over there. No, all of those excessive steps are all gone away because you directly have Diego's email address. So there is some good that is coming out of this change, but in case you have any mixed feelings, focus on this positive part over here. So these are the two enhancements, and my personal favorite is the enhancement, especially if you use that SharePoint choice type column. 
Now, I want to end by saying what I even told you back in 2022 is that use these list rules. Some of these will make your task so much more easier and faster instead of you building it from scratch in Power Automate. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment? Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.